Hello, my good friends, and happy Valentine's Day. Yes, it's a greeting card holiday. Yes, it's also the anniversary of a terrible school shooting. But it is also the two-year anniversary of my very first reading blog. So I've decided to do sort of something special this Valentine's Day. Because last year I did another reading vlog, and uh, <laughs> it was interesting. It was interesting. So Valentine's Day actually has a very special place in my heart because of something that occurred when I was in college. And I decided to write about this thing that occurred during my creative writing class, my nonfiction creative writing class. It falls under a category called creative nonfiction, which you've probably never heard of. But you might have actually read some creative nonfiction stories, true crime stories, Wild by Cheryl Strayed, Hillbilly Eulogy, Into the Planet. Um, memoirs are a form of creative nonfiction. Personal essays are creative nonfiction, and true crime stories are creative nonfiction. So this work that I wrote is called Pangolin Love. And since I wrote it, I have fallen in love with pangolins. They are my favorite animal. And if you want to know more about pangolin conservation, you can click the link below. So while I play the game Pangolin Love, I'm going to read to you my story called Pangolin Love. Yes, this really happened to me. This conversation changed my life, and I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Pangolin Love by Amanda Norman I had worked at Ashley Furniture for a year and a half before I finally met my favorite co-worker. Her sour lips were quenched together while she leaned over a folder. She squinted her eyes, peering through a magnifying glass. I instinctively pushed my thick-rimmed glasses up my face. It was a nervous tick I developed in order to cope with relentless hours sitting at my desk pretending I wasn't doing homework and writhing from customers' cheap insults because their faux leather sofas had been delayed. Our boss had just yelled at me for being eight minutes late, as if I could have controlled the star car on I-35 and Professora Pena's lecture about plus perfecto verbs that had gone over class time by 25 minutes. I turned to my coworker Kathy, and frowned at her. I don't know why I let her scream at me like that, I said and opened a web browser. The day was February 14th, so I was confronted by the cheery Valentine's Day Google Doodle. It was a game. Pangolin love, they called it. Just ignore it, Kathy said. You know she don't get it. Fuck this, I said and clunked my fingers against the keyboard. If Tim can read short stories and rant about greenhouse gas emissions, I can do Spanish homework and roll with some pangolins. I clicked on the doodle. A pink pangolin the most trafficked animal in the world, began rolling down a virtual hill. I poked at the mouse. The pangolin sprang up. Kathy put her magnifying glass down and sifted through some papers. Her computer monitor's light glimmered off her bald spot, and I thought of how depressing female hair loss must be. I ain't got to deal with this shit for much longer, she said. I'm getting out of here as soon as I get a car. I pumped my fist as my pangolin rolled through level one. It's not so bad when corporate people aren't here. I made so much more money back when I was a customs broker, Kathy said. Wait a second. Customs broker? Kathy? Really? Kathy pinched her face. It was... I don't want to say more important. It was more important that Pangolin collected an energy heart. You think the stuff we do here is important? Making copies and babysitting salespeople? Sometimes I just want to shriek. It's only furniture. Kathy smoothed small straggles of hair over her bald spot. It's their livelihood. Some livelihoods are more important than others. Seriously, just face it. I'm pretty sure someone like a congressman or journalist's livelihood is more important than a furniture sales guy's. The pangolin moved to level three. 
Why'd you leave the customs brokerage thing if you liked it so much? She didn't respond at first, just staring at whatever was in that pale yellow folder. I had to take care of Mama when she got the cancer, she finally said. I creased my brows. Cancer? Shit. Yeah, but why'd you come here? Why didn't you go back to the customs thing? Nobody give me a chance because of my age. I turned away from my computer, stared hard at Kathy. She took her hands out of her hair and put them on the keyboard. The bald spot wasn't as obvious, but it was there. It always would be. Sorry about your mom, Kathy, I said. Mm, was how she responded. She stared at her computer, working through the job we both hated. She flicked her eyes to the sales floor. Watch yourself. Someone's coming. Our boss appeared over my shoulder. She fisted her hands and pressed them tightly into her hips. Amanda, you cannot be playing games, she exclaimed in her accent that hadn't left her, even though she left Georgia eight years ago. Here. She plopped a folder labeled General Product Knowledge on my desk. Read through that, she said. You're going to have to know your stuff. She swung her hands off her hips and powered onto the sales floor. At least I have school to distract me from all this work drama, I said, trying to look at the positive. I don't go to school, Kathy replied. It sounded like, more like she was talking to herself. I felt the AC power on and disturbed my hair. I pushed it out of my eyes and patted down the red frizz that I never figured out how to control. I pouted at Kathy. Ever wish you did go to school? I don't know. I wonder what Kathy's mother's hair looked, had looked like if she'd had any left after the cancer. I wondered what my hair would look like at Kathy's age. If it would ever calm down. If I would ever calm down. I'd wonder if I'd really get what I wanted. If I'd be a writer someday. Or if I'd be a customs broker. A clerk at a furniture store. Or nothing at all. I hope you get your car, I told Kathy. I hope you get out of here. I hope we all do. We sat in silence for a while. Clerk said of furniture store, She was 60 and I was 20, but we were the same. We were nobody. When I looked back to my computer, the pangolin was dead. Game over. The most trafficked animal in the world. I studied our boss's folder reading about Durablin leather. Memory phone cushions, mattresses, laminate. I hope we all get out too, I mumbled, but I don't think Kathy heard me. When I got off work, I googled what they really looked like. They weren't pink. They were scaly, annihilated by poachers in Southeast Asia, slaughtered and cooked into a stew that rich people in China liked. I thought about those rich people. I wondered if their mothers ever had cancer. I wondered if they knew anybody like Kathy, a deflated old woman with no control over how her life had ended, and if they'd eat the pangolins had they known. It took me forever to fall asleep that night, alone in my room, far from China, far from Kathy. It was quite a creature, a pangolin. It was really something. Okay, guys, thank you. Like I said, Really not the best thing I've ever written, but it's the probably my favorite thing I've ever written. So thank you for watching. And again, if you want to learn more about pangolin conservation, if you want to maybe donate to conserving pangolins and just learn more about what an awesome animal they are, click some of the links below. So that's it for me. Happy Valentine's Day. Keep reading, keep writing, keep loving words. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.